Raman, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Back in November, you mentioned that the bull market in interest rates was coming to an end and that the question was no longer whether rates will rise, but more like by how much and how fast. So following this, do you have any further insights on what you predict how fast and how, by how much interest rates will rise in the short term? Great, I'm happy to be here. I think it's a, it's a very good question and, and there's a couple things to consider. First off, um, unlike the past few years, we're in a period where central bank policy and economic trajectories are very different depending on which part of the world you're talking about. So the first answer to will interest rates rise, I actually answer with a question, which interest rate? Mm -hmm. Because the dynamics in the Eurozone or in Japan are quite different, for example, than in the US or in the UK. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Country selection is going to be very important going forward. Um, now to answer the question, um, there are certain parts of the market where I do think there's pressure on interest rates, but once again, uh, to move higher that is, but once again we have to wonder about which part of the curve. So for example in the US I do think there's scope um, in the shorter part of the yield curve for interest rates to rise further, maybe 50 basis points, um, as the market begins to become concerned about the Fed uh, removing liquidity and ultimately hiking rates. At Standish, you employ a disciplined investment process with emphasis on risk control. Would you be able to expand about this core philosophy? Our clients in fixed interest look for us to provide um, value across a few dimensions. Safety, liquidity, and income. So the process that we've established at Standish is to look for opportunities in the global bond markets, but all the while remembering that what our clients are looking for is safety, income, and liquidity. So the luxury we have is within fixed income markets, because what we do in the fund tends to be high quality, it tends to be mostly developed markets, um, we do have the ability to limit the downside. Um, and to do that, we look at uh, various tools and measures. Can you expand on the primary source of value add and the combination of qualitative insights and quantitative inputs that surround this philosophy? Fixed interest is by nature a quantitative asset class. Um, you're dealing with yields, coupons, durations, maturities, etc. Um, so quantitative analysis is a key element to what we do day to day. However, uh, you cannot discount the qualitative nature. Um, the fund, for example, performed very well during the great financial crisis. The reason is qualitative judgment um, was able to overcome some of the flaws within pure quantitative analysis. Mm -hmm. So the combination is very important. Uh, in terms of value drivers, you know, what we have um, delivered to investors has really been a combination of three things. Security selection, which is, I think, critically important going forward. Um, Top-down macro analysis, so this is country decisions, duration decisions, currency decisions. And then the third is sector decisions. When to be in and out of the credit markets or other markets um, is going to continue to be a, you know, an important consideration going forward. Thank you. Would you be able to explain how this strategy is positioned given the current benign inflation environment and whether this is a concern for central banks going forward? Um, I think inflation is a concern on both sides for various central banks going forward. I mean, generally we're in a global disinflationary trend. Um, I think that's a genuine concern primarily for Europe and uh, in Japan. Um, in the US and in the UK, I think you may actually be dealing with a separate concern, which is potentially, in the near term anyways, uh, perhaps a stronger pressure on uh, wage inflation or other parts of inflation. In general, I think going forward, we're in a very different regime than what we've been in over the past three to five years. Spreads are lower, liquidity is being withdrawn from central banks, and there's a lot more regulation in fixed income markets than there was, say, five years ago. So what has worked for um, funds and investment managers over the past three to five years may not be the same recipe that works over the next three to five years. Again, security selection is key. Um, I think Standish uh, is well positioned in this fund to provide value in this environment going forward. Thank you. Thanks You're for your welcome. time today.